Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to draw a Japanese tattoo style snake head. Um, you know, sort of in my, my own interpretation. Uh, we're going to start off using Fabriano hot press watercolor paper and a Tombow mechanical pencil. Um, you can go ahead and pick up any pencil you'd like and any piece of paper you'd like. That way you can follow along. Okay, so to start off with, uh, to draw this snake head, we're going to put in the basic shape of the top part of the head. So this will be an oval shape. Sort of like that. Now I want the head to be facing this way. So we're going to do another oval shape starting at the back of this. This oval will be a lot skinnier and a lot smaller. And uh, this will indicate the bottom jaw. So depending on the angle you put between these two points will tell you how wide the mouth is open. Okay. So uh, that, that, second, that second oval represents the bottom jaw for, for this demonstration. Okay. Uh, we're going to go ahead and find the center of the head depending on where you want the sort of back of the head to be. I'm going to put mine a little bit further to the top portion of the circle just like that. And once I've put that in, I can go ahead and find placement for the eye. And I like to put my eye just about there. So further from the top of their head than it is to the bottom where the mouth sort of starts. Okay. So we just add a basic circle shape in. Now we're going to go around the mouth and add in the scales that form the inner portion of the mouth. So starting from the very tip here, you can add in a little curve like that. Okay. And then starting from where that curve ended, we're going to start putting in some, some scales that wrap around the mouth. Okay. Now to draw these scales, what they pretty much are, are little teardrop shapes like that. And they just overlap each other. So it'd be like teardrop and they overlap each other like that. Uh, you don't want them to be all the exact same size. Uh, you try to make them a little bit irregular. Uh, this just aids that natural appearance of the mouth. And you can also put different stepping to them. So what I mean by that is that they don't all have to follow the same same line okay so you can come down a little bit with some of them like that so they're a bit smaller and then bring them back up if you want to just make them a little bit random and irregular okay now following up to the top point of the mouth you can just add some very small circles and little little bubbles and that sort of thing and that, that'll just give you that scaly look all the way to the very edge and you can do that on the bottom edge of your mouth also Okay, so at this stage, I would like to add in the teeth. Uh, we're going to start by just adding in this little curve here, which is sort of like the fleshy gummy part of the mouth that stretches uh, when the mouth opens. And yeah, we're going to start adding in some teeth. So I like to start from this top edge up here and add the first tooth and then the second one at about this point after, after that bump. And the teeth are basically uh, curves like that and then curve back so you start with a little curve that peaks and then comes back just like that All right. one thing I should probably mention is uh, make sure to make that top fang a little bit smaller than this uh, this one down here because it is representing the fang at the back of the head so you want it to sort of sit back in the picture a little bit and that creates a little bit of depth uh, so now you can go through and add in the rest of the teeth I do them the exact same shape as the fangs just a little bit smaller 
Um, and you can add as many or as little as you like, or you can just follow what I'm doing and then change it next time. Okay, so I don't like to add heaps of teeth to this back edge of the mouth because we are going to put a tongue in and the tongue would end up covering a whole bunch of the teeth and so there's just no point drawing those in at this stage. Uh, and that having been said, we're going to go ahead and put that tongue shape in. So starting at sort of where the back of the throat would be, you can come in and do a few bumps just like that. And those bumps sort of will indicate the fleshy sort of gummy inside of the mouth. And this looks really good when it's all coloured and shaded. Those bumps, you can sort of add a lot of depth to them. Uh, it makes the mouth look a little bit more realistic. Um, starting above that, you can come down and do a few more bumps. That'll be the beginning of your tongue. And then the line behind that, I like to put some more gummy sort of fleshy shapes to it. Okay, so it's almost like creating three layers. You have the first layer of gum, the tongue, and then the, the next uh, layer of of gums behind that. So to draw the tongue we're gonna to follow that line that comes down like that and you know generally speaking when I do snakes I draw the tongue you know a thousand and one different times and erase it uh, because I really like to get the shape exactly how I want it depending on the drawing that I'm doing. Uh, in this case though we're only doing the head so we'll do a really basic sort of tongue, tongue shape okay. We're gonna come up like this and make like an S curve just like that okay and right next to that that uh, at the end of the line you can split off and do another line like that and that'll indicate the fork in the tongue okay and so now you want to basically create your tongue following those lines so we're going to come up like this follow that first line to a peak come back down and then from about here, you can start the bottom of the tongue and follow up to that second line, just like that. And now you can add a few more teeth behind the tongue if you want to. Okay. And at this stage, you can add the other gummy, uh, gummy fleshy sort of part to the other side of the mouth, just like that. And again, once you shave this in, that, that brings a lot of depth to the image and makes the mouth look quite realistic. So uh, that's another nice little touch you can add to it. Uh, in regards to the eye, what I like to do is draw a pupil and then around that, just a ring like that. And a lot of the time I'll do that ring in either a really fine black a really fine grey pen or a really fine red liner and that can make the whole thing look a little bit more aggressive and a bit more angry so it really depends on the the style that you're looking for in, in, in the style of the snake that I do they tend to look quite pissed off and a bit angry and that sort of thing so uh, you can go ahead and put in the shape of an eyebrow which should cut off the top quarter of the eye basically and I like to make the eyes a little bit more oval shaped than round, so you can go ahead and do that. Okay, and that sort of eyebrow shape will link up into some scales that we're going to do on the top of the head, uh, but we're going to start by adding in the shape of the head. So if you come off this uh, top line that we drew, you can come up a little bit and basically just make it make it really irregular. I like to put a bump at the top of the head in the same spot that this eye would be on the other side. Uh, it, it just gives a natural indication of where that eye would sit and sort of shows you that it is the other side of the head. And you can make some irregular sort of bumps along the way also just to, to add to that scaly bumpy look. Or we're going to come back like this and that would join up into the body of the snake as well. Okay, And you can sort of, you just sort of have to play with it and find shapes that you like. Um, or again, just to begin with, you can follow the pattern that I will do here. Okay, so we've done the scales on top of the head. 
And one last sort of detail before we start inking this is on either side of the eye, I like to put these lines. And once these little curved lines are shaded, it adds a little bit of depth to the eye and makes it look sort of sunken into the face, uh, which is entirely a style preference. Um, it's just something that I like to add. Uh, you can go ahead and add more scales to the back of the head if you'd like to. I typically don't like to leave a lot of plain space before the body scales, so you can go ahead and sort of add in some more bumpy scale shapes that go right down onto the neck if you'd like. Okay guys, it's finally time to start inking this one. So we're going to start with a Copic Multiliner 0.05. I'll also be going in there sometimes with a Unipin Fine Line 0.3. Uh, I just use this out of convenience. They're both really, really good pens. Um, I actually prefer the Copic Multiliners, but they are a bit pricier, so it just depends what you've got on hand basically, but any Fine Liner will do. So you just basically go ahead and start tracing all of your pencil lines uh, with the 0 0.5 and any sm really small details you can do with the 0 0.3. Okay, at this stage your basic inking should be done. We're going to go ahead and erase all the pencil lines and then get into some line boosting. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do a bit of line boosting. Uh, I'm not going to go as far as using a big thick 0.8. We're actually just going to go back in with a Copic 0.5 and thicken up some of those lines. Uh, so as per usual, I like to thicken up lines that bring things forward. So basically, sorry, thicker lines bring things forward. So basically, if you want this tooth to sit at the, the uh, front edge of the mouth, you can go ahead and just thicken that line up a little bit. And it really makes that front fang just pop forward. So you can go ahead and boost everything that you want to be at the front of the mouth. Or if you can follow along, you can just boost up everything that I boost as well. Okay guys, so at this stage we're going to start adding in the black shading. Uh, as always, I'll be using an Ecoline 700 black brush pen. And uh, just to change it up a little bit, I'm going to be using the Ecoline blending marker. Now normally speaking, what I'll do is I will use a watercolor brush and some water to blend out these colors. But I thought it might be interesting to use the Ecoline blending marker for this. So basically what we're going to do is put in black where we want our darkest shadows to be uh, and then blend them out using that uh, that uh, blending marker. So um, we're going to start with the inside of the mouth this uh, back fleshy sort of stretched, uh, stretched gums. Starting at the back of that we can add a fair bit of black to it. Now I like to add a lot of black to this one it is all the way in the sort of back of the mouth, so it's going to be quite dark. And you can use the blending marker to just fade that out to a grey. Just like that, okay? Same thing at the front, except we're only going to do a little bit of black at the very edge. And again, just fade that out a little bit. Add a little bit of black into there. And we're just going to continue adding blacks and blending it out to grey. Um, basically anything you want to be really dark, you add more black to. It's simple as that.
Okay, so we're going to start by doing the teeth because we've already got our black out. So what we can do is add a bit of black to our little paper palette here. Um, I, I've basically just gotten a, a piece of Fabriano hot press, folded it in half. This is just a little A5 piece. And it allows you to use it as a palette, basically, because you can pick the colors up off it and you can fade them out to the, you know, the lightest point you can have them at or you can get quite a bit on the tip. And it just lets you play with the colors a little bit more before putting them directly on paper. And we're going to basically add a bit of shading to the teeth in just a really light, light gray. Okay, at this stage we can come in and color in all those inner scales of the mouth. Uh, I'm going to be using a 202 brush pen from Ecoline. This is a deep yellow. Um, you can use whatever color you'd like to use uh, or follow along with whatever markers you have if you're using Copic markers or if you're using even colored pencils or something like that. You can just follow along with a similar yellow. And we're just going to go ahead and color in the edges uh, of the mouth. Okay, now before I continue coloring, I'm going to show you guys something that I do um, in some of my drawings. I don't always use this, especially for smaller scale work such as this, but just to give you an example, uh, sometimes I'll use a Molotow Graph-X Art Masking Liquid Marker. And essentially what this is, is it's kind of like putting down masking tape before painting something, and then having the ability to remove that masking tape, leaving the whatever's underneath it, or just a plain paper. And so sometimes I'll use this to get those clean white gaps. In this case, it's too thick to do those tiny little scales around the mouth. Uh, but what I will be using it for is adding a line or a white area around those main uh, scales at the mouth. There. Is you go ahead and draw with the masking fluid around those scales. If you don't have this, you can go ahead and leave it out completely, or you can try and uh, you can try and leave that white edge if you really want to uh, when you shade in with your uh, color on the head there. But it's very difficult to do if you don't have this masking pen. So I suggest if you don't have it, to just leave it without the uh, without that little white line that I like to add in there. Start coloring in the inside of the mouth. Uh, I'll be using a 334 brush pen from Ecoline, which is scarlet or pretty much red. Uh, you'll, you'll pretty much notice that in a lot of my videos, I'll use the same color palette. Uh, they're colors I find work really nicely together, uh, colors that I really like to use, and they all sort of follow the same theme. That way, a lot of my stuff, especially if it's in a traditional style or a tattoo-esque style, they all sort of match the same color palette, okay? And so we're going straight from where we've shaded black and coloring outwards to the very edge. You can leave a little bit of a gap at the edge there and then go ahead and use your blending marker just to blend out that red so that it goes a little bit more pink towards the edge and creates a highlight. exact same marker, the 334 Scarlet, add a little bit of red to our palette here, and I'm going to try and just get a little bit of pinkish red on the very tip of our brush marker here, and put a little line at the back of the eye, and sort of just shade off that line, leaving a white gap sort of all the way around the eye. So at this stage we're going to go in and start adding in our main color of the snake, which in this case I'm going to be using a 508 brush pen from Ecoline. The color is Prussian Blue. So you can go ahead and start coloring from your dark areas outwards and anywhere that you want to be really light, I would go ahead and use a watercolor brush to blend them out.
Okay, now all there is left to do is to let the ink dry and then wipe away all of the masking fluid that we put down earlier. And that's basically how to go ahead and draw a tattoo style or tattoo influenced uh, or Japanese style snake head. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Please give us a thumbs up if you got something out of it. Uh, leave me a comment below and let me know what you want to see next. If you want to see more tutorial videos or if you want to see more time-lapse footage or art challenges, let me know in the comments below. You can join me over on Facebook at Daggett Designs to keep up with all of my update work uh, and my online portfolio, my digital portfolio. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more great content. See you later.